It takes money to make money. It's not what you know, it's who you know. While there may be some truth in both these sayings, they're not particularly inspiring, are they? If you are one of those people with little to no influence, have even less money, and know nobody of any particular importance, but are searching for a way to succeed anyway, then this video is for you. The lessons in this video are based on the book, The Psychology of Money, by Morgan Housel. In this book, Housel explains how one can use an understanding of the psychology of money to find success, and how following these lessons makes one focus on what he can control to achieve financial and have other success. Financial success has little to do with how smart one is, but rather one's understanding of and behavior toward money. We all know many examples of less educated people achieving way more financial success than their smarter, more formally educated counterparts. It kind of makes you think Housel was right, doesn't it? In today's video, we look at one of the lessons outlined by Housel. Confounding compounding. With affordable amounts of money, anyone from any background can harness the power of compound interest to generate significant wealth over time. Start early, have a long-term plan, and be patient. Let's assume a very generous bank offers to pay John and Lisa a return of 10% per year, and they each invest $1,000, called the principal. John wants to spend the interest each year and only keep the principal in the bank, while Lisa wants to save for 30 years, so she doesn't take the interest out each year. In John's case, the 10% amount to $100 each year. So after one year, he'll have $1,100 in his account, out of which he'll take $100. After the second year, he'll once again have $1,100 in his account, out of which he'll take $100. After the 30th year, he'll have $1,100 as usual and take $100. He will be left with $1,000 in his account. So his principal and the returns he made amount to $100 multiplied by 30, so another $3,000. A grand total of $4,000 that he made over 30 years. Lisa, on the other hand, will make more. After one year, she will have $1,100 in her account, but she keeps everything there. After the second year, she will earn 10% of those $1,100, and not only on the initial $1,000. Therefore, she will have $1,100 plus $110, so $1,210. After the third year, she will earn 10% of those $1,210 and have $1,331. After year 30, she will have $17,449.40, over four times more than John. Let us look at the return on investment of the same $1,000 investment after 60 years. As we see, a $1,000 investment will return almost $394,000. That, ladies and gentlemen, is one example of how focusing on what we can control, coupled with a knowledge of the psychology of money, can change the financial fortunes of any individual or family, from any background, using pretty much just the passage of time. Thanks for watching. Wait! Before you go, I know what you're thinking. 60 years is a very long time to wait for a return on an investment. Well, here's another way to look at it. The time will pass anyway. This then becomes a question of whether you would have benefited from the power of compound interest after this passage of time. Example, if you're 45 years old, have you benefited financially from the passage of the past 45 years?